sudden, I can tell you, I started hearing this noise in the air, mechanical screeching, drumming, crazy sounds. What is that? This is Touched by Heaven. Everyday encounters with God. Those moments when heaven and earth collide. And we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention. Welcome, it's episode 258. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. That sound, that sound. Can a sound from out there in the air drive someone back into the arms of Jesus? Uh, And that's just part of our story today with with our guest from Australia. Oh, hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good, good. And do you pronounce your name sorry, or how do you pronounce your name? Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that never causes you problems, does it? <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> you just walk into a room and say, I'm sorry. And everyone says, oh, why? You know? <laughs> yeah, that has happened too. Sorry was born and now lives in Australia. But there was this gap of time, just a few years, when she was four years old. She and her older brother and the folks went back to the parents' home country of Finland. And there was this experience with this mound of snow and this experience that happened a little over 50 years ago. But the emotion that this memory brings back from age four. But I just distinctly remember this one thing that happened. We were living in this old house behind my dad's sister's house. So there was two houses on the one block. It was in town, but larger blocks. And um, we were outside playing on the snow, you know, they how they push up the embankments, you know, to clear the road. So they've got these massive snow embankments on the sides. And I guess at, at four years old, you know, it doesn't have to be that high and it's quite mountainous to a small child. And it was it was nighttime, well, it was dark in those countries. It gets dark super early, like, you know, it can be four o'clock in the afternoon and be dark. We're playing on this snow hill we were sliding down on little toboggans and whatnot, and then I took this one edge and I don't know what happened. I'd miscalculated. I don't know being four. Who knows? And it was like a, instead of being like a, uh, a mountainous slope, like a little slope, it was more like a cresting wave. So I've gone over it and then just crashed, like crashed to the bottom. And I clearly remember, I clearly remember this, have my whole life um, of just, I just couldn't breathe. Like I must have winded myself or hit my throat or I don't know what I did, but I just could not breathe. And I looked up into the sky and there was this, um, oh, sorry, I can't believe so long ago. Um, sorry, it seems ridiculous. Wow, obviously it, it touched um, you very deeply. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I guess this is the first time apart from maybe telling, you know, some, my, maybe my sister and definitely my daughter knows this story, but I've never really spoken about it on a, you know, open forum, I guess. Um, but anyway, I looked up and I could, and I clearly saw what looked like an arch, like an arched door um, in the dark sky. There was this, like this bright, 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 bright arch door and then set behind it on both sides of it. So it was almost like if you imagine a house portico sticking out the front with the two windows being placed further back. Um, And so there was this big arch door and then these two windows on either side and I could see movement behind there. And it was like looking into somebody's house in the sky, like it wasn't in the sky, it was like way, way, way far away. But I could clearly see it and there was like movement. And and I really got the general feeling then, like at that age, that it was like, and I could see like a seat perhaps way back in the light, so further, further into the bright, almost like at the back of the room. And there was definitely a seat and somebody sitting there and then like the fluttering movements around and as a child I I just recognized it and I thought there's heaven and there's angels it was like I was being shown so why why do you why do you think here you are you know 51 years later or so 
and and even speaking about it, you, know, you become why? I just think it's because it's I'm kind of um, I'm kind of at a crossroads, and I have been for a long time, and because I went away, totally went away from God, totally didn't go away in the sense that I stopped believing. I've always believed, but just, you know, went to the ways of the world, I suppose. And and I think just coming back, coming back to God and then trying to get that relationship back, I think that's what, I think that's what's so um, upsetting, deeply personal, you know, just that, just the depth of it. But to you, yeah. this says so much about God, though. Right, right here, right now, says so much about God and why he gives us these encounter moments. Most people do not remember, you know, that many elements of age four. There's a few little things, but this is hitting you so powerfully. I mean, what are the, you know, what are the thing happened at age four that has evokes this kind of emotion? I don't think Cheerios did it, you know. I don't think cartoons did it. You know, this is, <laughs> you know, this is. Um, this says so much about why God plants those encounter moments so early in many of our lives. Uh, I don't remember having them at that age, but but so many of our listeners and people who have participated on the on these episodes mm. have mentioned that. So, and that mm. walking away from it's why you can't walk away completely, can you? Oh yeah, no, no, always there. I mean, you know, you can kind of, um, you know, you can kind of do your whole go on with your business and and do things that you shouldn't do, and you know, but always there, always there. So because this is guess, always you know, there, it's always going to be there for you. you yeah, know? and it, yeah, and it yeah, keeps calling it. you back that at some point uh, <laughs> you're going to be in that room. You know what I mean? You're going to be in front of that throne in front of, in front of Jesus. And there's, he's all love and all that, but uh, you know. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it's a definitely a, um, a journey. That's for sure. I, um, I actually, the other thing too, I don't, I sort of felt like, um, probably important to say is that I had an episode, uh, back in 1991, um, my husband and I, we had and we, we had moved to another state or to the Northern Territory, so another territory in Australia, and um, we were, were living on acreage there and um, we had actually been separated for a little while and we'd got back together and it was all good, everything was fine. But I was at, um, I started getting plagued. I started getting plagued in my mind of every time he would go to work and I'd be left on the acreage on my own, of this thoughts, this thought coming into my head and like a suicidal thought, but it was like a, like an egging me on thought, like go on, you'll show them, you should just do it, that'll teach them. But because mum, because my mum had been so strong in her faith and she had always, always spoken and warned and told of these spirits and these evil things that can start talking to you that you then to just know exactly what it is and how to fix it, you know, pray to God, tell it to be on its way. And um, anyway, and this went on for a few days and, you know, call me silly. I was mid twenties then and probably really stupid, but I kind of, I knew what I had in the, in the power of God, in the power of the Lord, I knew I had that protection and I knew I had that power to be able to say, get away from me. But I also started to almost entertain it in the sense that I didn't tell it to go away immediately. And I just, and it kept coming back at me day after day. But the one thing I noticed was that it, whenever my husband would come home, it would go silent. It would leave me alone. So it was always whenever I was on my own. And then it wasn't long after that, maybe a few months um, after that, and one of our friends, one of my husband's friends, and my husband had knew his the friend's wife for a really long time. Apparently the husband's friend had come home from work on the Friday night, gone into their bedroom, 
and she just heard the gunshot and he had killed himself. And they said, the story was, oh, his mates at work had said, you know, he was fine, everything's fine at work, there's no issue, there's nothing going on. Like, why, why, why? And I can tell you I knew why. I knew why. And I told my sister that story at that time and she said, you really need to get that out there because there's probably so many people, so many people out there even now, since then and even now, maybe now getting worse where they're getting tormented by these voices in their heads. It's we not just look, their look at look at the young people's suicide rate. We just uh, we're just yeah. we just got an email from a friend talking about somebody at a local high school. You know, boy had killed himself, and you hear this story a lot. I mean, they obviously they try to keep these things quiet, but this this is so that the the suicide rate is just jumping, and you know that 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 voice just keeps pushing. You're right, and I'm not blaming the parents. I mean, but for lack of knowledge, for lack of knowledge, kids aren't been giving this information. No one is given this information of, you know what you're fighting against. Like, you know what you're fighting against. This is not your voice. This is demonic stuff that is coming into your head and egging you on to do this. And when you've got no knowledge of that, you do they, they think it's their voice. They think it's the right thing to do. So when they say, I don't know why, I often think, yeah, I do. I do know why. So I've had that experience, yeah. So yeah, that you, was... you've been there. And, and to your point, their voice can sound like your voice. Oh, absolutely. It can sound like your own voice saying, yeah, do do that. You're, you're, you're hitting a home run here, uh, sorry, because um, it's so important to immediately say, in the name of Jesus, be gone. In the name of Jesus, just start saying that name. Just start saying the name. Yeah. The name has power. In the name of Jesus, yeah. be gone. You say it, and bam, he's gone. He has to go because Jesus rules. That's sort of what I was saying, like, you know, call me stupid for entertaining it for those days. But I just kind of I did it knowing uh, knowing what I know from mum. Uh, and, and then in the end, I did do exactly what you said. I'd had enough. I was, you know, in the name of Jesus, go, get away. Look how, many, look how many kids aren't baptized today. Look how many kids don't have that little that spark of the Holy Spirit right there at baptism with them mm -hmm. because parents are, are saying, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll decide later in life. Man, that's mm -hmm. a pretty important decision you're leaving to them for later in life. You know, can you imagine saying, you know, I'm not going to give them food until they decide what they want. <laughs> I'm not yeah, going well, to educate exactly. them until they decide where they want to go. You know, guy, come on, let's, let's think about this. How are they going to choose something that they know nothing about? Amen. And then when, and when there's no, when there's no inner, strength there's no inner peace that comes from god and then they fall into those troubles that there's nothing to lean on there is zero they have nothing all they have is fear or loneliness because there's nothing else they don't have that peace let's pause right about here then more with sorry and her story here on touched by heaven everyday encounters with god this episode sponsored by MagigoriaPilgrimage.life. It is amazing to me. It, 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 through all these episodes, this is 258, how many times? Kind of out of nowhere, people just bring up Magigoria. A couple episodes back, we had Joe from Ireland who, you know, he got the call to go. And, and once he went, he experienced what so many of us do. So Our Lady organized for me to go to Magigoria. And what happened in Magigoria? I meet these amazing girls. They're incredible. They're not like anybody I'd ever met in my life. They're holy. They're fun. They're beautiful. I had the. I met people that I had never met in my life before. These were full of love. It was the most exhilarating thing. But from that moment forward, I had this protection. And if you want to go in October, the weather was just so perfect uh, when we went last year. It's October 13th through the 20th. Here's what you do. J just get all the information and, and see if, if that call is there for you. MagigoriaPilgrimage.life, M-E-D-J-U-G-O-R-J-E, Pilgrimage.life, October 13th to the 20th. You're staying with one of the visionaries. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? I mean, really. Uh, with Maria, who still has the daily apparitions, you have access to that. You have access to Apparition Hill and Cross Mountain and whatever may happen there for you. It's where Mary, the Queen of Peace, has been appearing there to the six visionaries since June of 1981. It's like no place Elizabeth and I have ever been before. It's the holiest place I've ever been to. It's where everyone seems to be on the same page. You're not scurrying about. You know, it's not It's not a place where you're just constantly getting on the bus and going here and going there. You're strolling somewhere. 
Check it out, MagigoriaPilgrimage.life. You're going to be going with Aaron, and there's no one easier to be around than Aaron. Trust me. He is just a relaxed dude, you know? I hear you talking about Magigoria, and as soon as I heard you talking about that, I I said to my daughter, I said, I, I want to go there. And she's like, yep. It's almost like I feel like I need to go there to get that real sense of like that depth. Just I know I can get that at home. I know I can get that. I'm, I'm not going to a local church at the moment, but I just feel like that would be the place to go to really meet God in a way, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. It's it is kind of a calling. I think when um, and a lot of I'll be honest with you, a lot of it, a lot of the impact of Magigoria for me was after I got back home. We sometimes found it difficult. <laughs> you're supposed to be kind of there and sitting and reflecting, but we, there was just certain elements that that didn't happen right away. And it wasn't really mm. until we came back and we started reflecting on everything that happened, and I started having more kind of more experiences and understanding the experiences that that I did have back there, uh, it was very powerful. Yeah. There was something about that place, no question. There's no question. Look at how you've come back. Look at you. You know, Holy Spirit is in you. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get there. Definitely. Definitely trying to get there. I'll tell you another thing, and this was a really major thing um, to have the journey. This was when, so this is going back to, I heard a thing on your program uh, a few weeks back or it could have been even from months ago because, you know, sometimes I skip backwards, where the lady talked about the sounds that people were hearing all over the world, and she said it was like eight to ten years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was she was she hearing yeah, a trumpet? Yeah. What was she hearing? Or was it a – what? I, don't, she's, I think she talked about the trumpet. Yeah, well, it talked about the trumpet yeah. call. Now, that really struck a nerve with me, a chord, because I what happened was um, it was actually Sunday the 30th or 31st of May, whatever the last day of May is, but it was that Sunday in 2015. So my granddaughter Amelia was born in February and then we um, were Chris, she got christened on the Sunday morning into the Lutheran church. So she got christened and then that Sunday night we were having – a big family get together. We were at my um, mother-in-law's house. We sort of all had to travel to get there. And my mother-in-law had this massive, huge um, brick home, two-story brick home, double insulated, doesn't carry a lot of sound. So we'd all been hanging around, whatnot, and we'd all gone to going to bed. Anyway, so we've all getting ready to go to bed. And all of a sudden, my husband's asleep on the bed. I'm just gathering my pyjamas up to go and have a shower and my daughter's laying down on the floor and all of a sudden I can tell you I started hearing this noise in the air it was it was like this mechanical um um mechanical screeching drumming like this crazy sounds like all these sounds put together and I stood there going what is that and it and it was that loud. My husband still didn't wake up to it. My, my daughter sat up and she said, what's that noise? So I've immediately gone down and then it sort of stopped, but it would have gone for maybe 15 seconds. So not a long time, but long enough when you're standing there going, what is that sound? So I've gone downstairs and looked into the boys' room because they're up on the computer. And I said, were you boys just playing some really loud music? And they were like, no, we're just... I hear like they just and when I opened the door they kind of looked at me like what and they were like no what noise they hadn't heard it anyway so that was the Sunday night well it didn't worry me didn't scare me but I'm like what on earth was that so went and had a shower came back out and the next morning I said to my daughter what was that noise and she said I don't know now if my daughter hadn't heard it if she hadn't been in the room and hadn't heard it I probably would have said oh I must have imagined it, like it didn't really happen. But because she too heard it, she did hear it slightly different to me, we've discovered, but we both heard it. So on the Monday, we were all heading back back up to the farm, which is where I'm now, so a couple of hours north of where we were. And um, so my husband's driving, so I'm madly on the phone trying to Google anything that I could think of that would have made this noise. And so I'm Googling like, 
because I'm like, it sounded like the War of the Worlds music. It kind of was that War of the Metallic, screechy, banging. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's that's a good way of describing. Yeah, okay, I'm with you. After madly searching for, you know, a good few hours, I'm on the phone, I'm on everything trying to, I came across this site on Facebook called Strange Sounds, which I'd never heard of before. I didn't know there was such a page. So I got on that and I found one that was kind of similar. They were kind of making these videos going like they're hearing these really strange sounds in the sky and they're going out with their phones and listening and you could hear like, oh, it just really had like big, um, not harps, but like, like trumpet sounds, I guess, mostly long trumpet sounds. And people were coming out in the streets going, what is that? And it was a big, it was a phenomenon that was happening all over the world. I remember reading about that. I I couldn't have told you that it was 2015, although when I think back, I do remember there's a, there's a website I kind of check out too. It's, it's faith based, uh, but website, but they also kind of keep an eye on that kind of stuff. And, uh, there was a stretch there where there was a lot of that. Yeah. 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 I was listening to, um, Paul Begley at the time with different things. And I came across a video clip of his, and you can still find it on YouTube, and it's called Sounds of the Apocalypse. And I can tell you, as soon as I found that that Paul Begley video, I started getting quite jittery because I thought, hang on a minute. And in the first bit of the video, he talks about how a friend of his had put all of those sounds that people had been videoing about, and he had put them together. And then he played that sound, and I can tell you, if I had have been having a cup of coffee when I heard that thing, I would have been wearing it all over myself. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't stop my hands shaking. Even now when I'm talking about it, I'm going up in goosebumps. It was just... It was my sound. And the only difference between that sound that he put together and my sound is that my drum beats were faster. To this day, I mean, that was eight years ago. That's when I I started having an almost meltdown before I even heard it. And when I heard it, it it just, yeah, my hands, I couldn't stop. And I rang my niece, the same niece that I had stopped to have a coffee with, and I couldn't talk. I was just crying uncontrollably. I was couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk. I said, I have found my sound. And then I wanted, because I went into this, I don't know, I just went into this thing of I just wanted to tell everybody that I'd heard this sound and everybody, and I had felt like I needed to tell this. Yeah. I just felt like I needed to tell this. And then when you're, pro, I thought, I'm going to tell you. Cause what, be what, and what do you take from that? Going, what do you, what do you, you know, what's your deciphering of that particular experience? Well, that's what, that's what actually got me l- looking back more, um, back towards God and turning back and really delving deep because I, I think I said I was listening to Paul. I wasn't listening. I just remembered I wasn't listening to Paul Begley at that time at all. He, that was the first thing I found of his. And then I sort of started listening in on his programs a bit and whatnot. But that was actually the turning point for me where I started coming back and being much more active to God in my own mind. That was, and I have said to people over time, it's, I took it as a warning shot over the bow. That was the turning point for me, which got me back on track and really searching back for God again. And as I said, it was a warning shot over the bow. So whatever that means, that were the words that came yeah. into my mind. Isn't it interesting what, what touches people? You know, I mm. find it interesting, um, uh, all the different paranormal shows that have asked me to be a guest because God's the original paranormal, you know, um, and yeah. because there is mystery out there. <laughs> you know, there's mm-hmm. mystery. Oh, Absolutely. And then I'd had an idea from um, my daughter. She'd been speaking to someone and they had actually, because we're renovating the new house, they had actually written scripture onto their window frames and things. Mm. So I, I have done that. I've actually written a few psalms on, on, on spots in the house. They'll be covered over with paint, 
but the scripture will still be there. Oh, I love it. What, like what? What did you have? Uh... Well, I'll go, hang on a minute. I'll go read one of them. And how do you write um, it? What do you do? Oh, I just wrote it with a felt pen, you know, just a pen onto the window frame. Oh, okay. And because it's going to be painted over, it'll still be here. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, uh, so I wrote Psalm 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Nice. What's uh, what's left to get? What what is what is it you don't feel complete about? Oh well, I mean the rest is up to me now, I suppose. Just you know, dig into the knowledge side of things, just digging into the knowledge and reading more and spending more time with God. Mm-hmm. You know, reading reading the Bible and so on. Um, I like to listen to. I've been listening to a lot of um, like gospel music. Mm-hmm. So I've had that playing on in the house the last little while quite a bit. You know, if I'm busy, I'll have it on my phone. So I've had that sort of thing around the house, and it's been really, really peaceful. The house is really peaceful. That's nice. Um, is there something that yeah, takes it for for you? Is there anything, what takes you, what takes things from head knowledge to heartfelt? You know what I mean? I mean, it's one thing to fill our head, and we all need to keep that knowledge coming in, and I do that too. But there, you know, then there are those things that uh, crawl into your heart that really kind of say more about who you are and what you believe, and or is that a process um, to go from the head to the heart? I don't really know. It's I don't know that it's a process. I think some things just touch us, and I think if you're aware of you spoke with someone about like the little miracles that happen, like it's a, lots of little miracles that happen to us all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm really aware of those. Like I've I've suffered anxiety and fear the last few years with my horse riding. And so I've been talking to God about that a lot and um, that's coming together and I've also recognised that if I am fearful, I'll just sit there quietly and say a prayer. I'll ask God quietly in my mind, just God, please, I I don't want to be fearful. Please take it from me. I just need to do this and can you please help me and come ride with me? And and then, you know, 15 minutes has gone by and all of a sudden I've realised, oh, the fear's gone. But I totally acknowledge that to God again, like that, you know, so there just are those moments. I don't know the answer to your question as in to go from heart, head to heart. Maybe it's a feeling. I know as, as you're talking, I, um, you know, if you put, if you put God kind of, kind of put him hovering in the air or, or just put him up there in, in the heavens, just, you know, look up, there he is, you know, I think what, yep. is, what has happened, um, over time, especially of late is that there used to be a ladder to him and the ladder were the kinds of stories we're talking about on these episodes. You know, somehow or another, we've just kind of like, if you look at the Bible, you see ingrained in the culture, well, look at that, they believe in angels because there's about 250 mentions of angels, and they believe that people got healed when they prayed because they got miraculous healings, and they believe in things yeah. like manna from heaven, and they believe things like, you know, and you, and you see how on every page, God is manifesting himself, and they're writing about it. You know, look, this is what's going yeah. on right now, you know, and we look in the world today, and and to me, that's the ladder to understanding and believing in the invisible, <laughs> the, that that invisible man in the sky, right? So when you remove yeah. when you remove the ladder, how do, how do you get there? You can't, you know. He looks so, he's vague, he's distant, he's way out there if he exists at all. So, I think the the role of touched by heaven is to is that this is the ladder we're we're putting the ladder back in place so that when you see all these things about angels or when you see all these things about the miraculous divine interventions and near death experiences to me that's the ladder that leads you right up to God where all of this comes from and we've yeah. made the mistake of removing the ladder or allowing the ladder to be taken away from us it's hard to get up there I don't know is it making you go further up the ladder or is it just drawing God closer to us on earth Ah uh, there you go There you go because, you know, we're just, because then you're more, you're just aware. You're just aware of all those little things. There's, there's so many little things. Like just, I needed styrofoam. I needed styrofoam flat shooting because I had a horse that I needed to transport once in my horse trailer. And um, so I went to the local tip, local dump and, you know, lo and behold, Lord, I need styrofoam. And there was just sheets of the stuff out there. Mm. So, and then one of my friends, she told her about it. She goes, I don't know what it is with you. She said, all these things happen to you all the time. <laughs> I said, you know, and I said to her, well, you just got to ask. All right, do we have a takeaway out of this, uh, sorry? My takeaway would be that I'm really glad that I got to speak with you. Um, I'm really glad to, that I got to share that story, particularly the sounds. I'd be really interested to know 
um, what it means apart from my own, you know, warning shot over the bow. And I don't know, I guess my takeaway really is that I'll just keep ploughing ahead and keep keep plunging forward. You've encouraged me to keep to keep plunging forward and to keep looking. Thanks, Ari. The sights and sounds from heaven. Even 50 plus years later, that that memory of looking up into the heavens and seeing somebody sitting on what she called it, was it a seat or a chair, a throne, whatever, Jesus, planting that memory so that through all these ups and downs of life, she always has that to cling to. The sound she heard, uh, I don't know, I kind of follow this now and then too, where it's like, what is that? Where's the, where, how do you explain what's going on? Well, that's the magnetic field from the planet Kromar. What? Is it a sign of the apocalypse? Whatever that might mean. You know, we're calling this episode Sights and Sounds from Heaven because, well, we have a four-year-old looking into heaven, you know. And then we have these uh, sounds. If, if indeed these sounds are created by, say, angels blowing trumpets in the sky, as, as some of us have seen, you know, if that is the source, then these are sounds from heaven telling us something, warning sounds. That's what most people seem to think they are, that an end of something. I don't know. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be, as most things are, trying to get our attention. You know, the heavens are proclaiming something here. Uh, regardless, the, the answer is always repent and turn back towards God. I mean, that is the answer for all of this. Look what happened with Sari. That, that sound somehow touched a chord in her, watching, listening to some YouTube videos, that it just hit something in her and turned her back towards God. So it, it, it did what it was supposed to do for Sari. Don't know about anybody else out there, but certainly people are interested in these kinds of things. All right, well, so I need to hear your voice. Or let's just say your typing skills <laughs> at touchedbyheaven.net. And let me know who you are and what story you have at touchedbyheaven.net. Love to hear your story of angels, encounters, whatever it happens to be. Quick Patreon shout out. Thank you, Ron Hegler. Thank you, Mary Reigert, for being with us in the family of Patreon. Thanks for going to patreon.com. Or you can come here at episode 258 at touchedbyheaven.net and click your way through. This really, you're the fuel. I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You're the fuel. Your stories and your financial support keep it all going. And, and Patreon just makes it so easy with, uh, with the month-to-month support. So thank you for that. Ma- remember, magicorypilgrimage.life. I'm telling you, get in the calling, then October 13th to the 20th, it's going to be another great trip. Touchedbyheaven.net. We have a link here for that trip. And uh, I'll see you next week here at Touched by Heaven. Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Tramper Jack, reminding you that next week we'll be featuring that hot new band, Screeching Feet.